Miriam Joy and welcome to my studio. Today we're working on our recycled jar for Halloween and this is a lot of fun. We're going to be using just a napkin. You usually have a Halloween napkin left over one or two from a party and if you want to you can add some little fairy lights to it. It's real inexpensive project and it's things that you have around your kitchen. So let's get started. We're going to make our cute little Halloween jar out of just regular kitchen jars that you get spaghetti sauce in, olives, so you can have all kinds of different shapes and sizes just with items that you purchase every day that are in your kitchen. Don't throw them away. I use them for lots of different seasons as well. But how many of you have your leftover one or two napkins from your party or the season? But if you don't, you also can just pick them up and they're usually real inexpensive. They're all usually under a dollar and you can pick out which one you'd like. So either way, it's uh, inexpensive and it's fun. So a be the one thing I did find is usually your napkins are the same color all the way around and you don't have to worry about it. You may have to decide if you have a big one, you want a bigger jar. As if you had a smaller design, you may want a smaller jar. So kind of think that in mind about what size your jar is. Like this one works really well. But the thing I noticed is he's not solid all the way around. So we have to uh, kind of think about that if you wanted to work with him. And you may just use this part twice and use like the cat and the tree or something over here again. So those are a couple of things to think about. One of the things I do is I undo my napkin the whole way and I kind of want to put this bottom part at the bottom and I kind of want to figure out how far I need to cut this. This part doesn't have to be perfect up here but I kind of measured how far down I need that and I'm going to trim that just a little bit. If you got it just a little bit shorter, a little bit longer, it's okay. Sometimes I even put the napkins on and then trim them off afterwards, but that can get kind of clunky up at the top. I love this other little spider and I would like to incorporate him somewhere else. I might cut him out in a circle and bring him back in. Now, this is a double napkin and there's a couple of ways you can do this. Um, this one seems to be coming out really easy. A lot of times I just leave these on and you get a little bit of a bumpiness, but that's okay. So whatever you decide, uh, you can leave it on or you can take it off. It's not going to hurt anything. If you were going to use this for a candle holder and wanted it to be more see-through, then probably try to remove that layer. So I'm going to use some Mod Podge and it doesn't matter. You can use whatever Mod Podge you have, whether it's matte, satin, or gloss, but you want to make sure it's just regular sealer Mod Podge. You also can find it a lot in the smaller bottles at the dollar stores, Dollar Tree. So if you need just a little bit for this project, then look for it there so you don't have to buy a big whole bottle. Another option is get your 40 or 50 percent coupon when you're going to purchase it if you have to get it at the craft stores. I'm just going to use a regular old craft brush. Uh, does not have to be anything fancy. Um, can be a kids craft brush. Whatever you like. And I'm going to wet it and just start applying my Mod Podge to my jar. And this is just a real simple, inexpensive project. It's not supposed to be fancy. It's just supposed to be fun. So we're just going to go ahead and do this all the way around the bottle. I'm already more than halfway there. I got my Halloween bug flying around here. And I've got my dog chasing my Halloween bug here. So that's fun. Okay, so we've got that on. That did not take up very much Mod Podge at all. We're going to do another layer. But 
I'm going to kind of lay this down as flat as I can on the ground or table here and just start to push that down and get that nice and flat. I'm going to show you a couple tricks up here where your jar may start to bend a little bit if it's going down. Just cut a little bit in with your scissors and that will help adjust there a little bit. We're going to cover that up sadly. I think our little spider is going to be covered up. It may not be. I tore that just a little bit. I've got to be a little bit careful with him because he can be a little bit softer since we only did one layer. So that may be another reason you want to leave one more layer on. So I'm going to bring this around till we hit this first part here. And because this jack o' lantern is right up against this rim, we've got to really not go over it much. I may see if I can get my spider on there. Let's we'll take a look in one second. I am not going to do it. It's going to just be too hard. And You could have wrapped this the other way around so that the this would be underneath and not on top. But usually the design is not as close as it is right there. And I'm just going to go ahead and push that up against the rim and also the bottom. I've got a little bit of a tear, but that's good so you can see how to fix it. It's in a section I'm not as worried about. So I'll just put a little bit of purple there and we're going to cover that up anyway. And I'm going to put some in that seam and press that seam down. Now I'm going to go ahead and do one more good layer with our Mod Podge over the top. Just be careful now. You shouldn't have to press or do anything. On this part right here, it wasn't quite enough there, so I'm going to come up under there with my brush, put it there, and just put that over the top. So if you have any that are like that at the bottom, you can do that as well if you need to add a little bit of water to your Mod Podge to get it going evenly you can. So I'm going to get this on really well and I'm going to let this dry nice and good and then we're going to start to decorate it. We've got them all dried and he's ready to be decorated. Now I want you to kind of think about, I'm going to attach some uh, spiders, especially in the areas where we have open stuff. So that's something to kind of think about. And I do want maybe one kind of visible on the front. So we're going to glue those on. You could also glue them on with your E6000 as well. Um, while I'm waiting for my spiders to glue on, I would of course I'm a girl and like this sparky so we're going to do some stickable gemstones and I think that just kind of gives it that Halloween magic kind of feel and I'm just going to put them here and there try not to kind of put them where I want my um, spiders to go but then we can just decorate that all over However, you think that needs to kind of be. This guy I'm going to cover up with our other part. And I've got some spider legs there, so I think I'm going to cover up my spider legs um, with some of the garland that we're going to use. And the garland, you can use any type of garland you want. You can pick up from the Dollar Tree. I have some garland that I also have from previous projects that I've taken it off of. So another idea is to put them into the eyes or pumpkin just to give them that extra sparkle bling. Whatever size you think you'd want in there. You could even put the black in there. It wouldn't show up just as much, but it would kind of give it that hint of sparkle. 
I'm going to try to do one or two small ones in his nose and his mouth just to add a reflective light. We'll see if that works here. But just play with it. Um, there is no right or wrong. It's just whatever you decide to, to do to give it some fun, festive feel. So then I'm going to put these spiders on here. I'm going to put one down there. These are just the inexpensive spiders and it's just to give him another dimension. Cover that guy up there. And then I want... You don't want them all going in the same direction so make sure you kind of think about that. They go different directions and then I want one kind of coming down here. I've got both of those at the bottom, so I'm going to put this guy up a, a little bit higher. So you can play with that as much as you want to. Our, we're going to add our little handle, and this is optional. I picked up my wire at the Dollar Tree in the floral department, so I wanted to kind of match my jar, and green was, excuse me, purple was the color. And I'm just going to flip this and make this kind of um, a loop to keep that in place. But we don't want to tighten it yet so I go through and do the other side. So I'm going to set that on there. I'm going to actually set it the other way so that's coming up to the top. And we're going to just kind of twist and bend this to make it any way we want. You can use a dowel. You can use scissors. You can use whatever you want to kind of make this your own shape, your own fun shape. The more wire you have, the more you may want to twist and turn it. That is totally up to you. You can also add some beads to it. I'm going to add some spider to it, so I'm not going to worry about it too much. So I'm going to bring that on and I'm going to cut it right about here to allow for a little bit of a bend on this other side. So the, this is a reason that we're not tightening that up quite yet. It's because we want to get this side done. So I'm going to bend him on. And I'm going to go ahead and tighten this one down now. Because that is the only one on this side. So, And now I'm going to go ahead and pull this a little bit tighter. And you can tighten that guy now so he doesn't move around as much on you. Nothing fancy. Just play with it, have fun, however you feel. You know, it's got like a bat thing going on. So make sure that you've got this kind of facing the direction you want to go in the front. And I'm going to kind of glue that in place. And then I'm going to place my garland around it. And I played with purple and orange. So whatever you think you want to do, if these guys get in your way and you don't like them, take them off. That's up to you. So I had used this, like I had said, I had some left over. So keep getting that in my rhinestones here. I want this to start on the side. And if you, my glue's still a little bit damp over there. So I am going to do two of this one and then I'm going to do a layer of green. I want to put this one on the inside of that there. So it's going around. And then I'm just going to hot glue him. You don't need much. You don't want to melt it make it look funny. You could also put a raffia bow there. That would be fun as well. And then I'm just going to put this little green one on top because I think it almost makes it kind of look like a um, pumpkin stem. So, however you feel you want that. And if you need to tack it down as you're working, then just tack it down. There is no right or wrong with that. I'm going to just bring it around here, figure out how much I want to cut. You can always cut more off later. I'm going to trim that tail just a little 
little bit, but you don't want to have so much glue that you lose your tinsel look of all that. Isn't that really cute? And that's so simple. The other thing I wanted to show you is how great this looks with our fairy lights. And I'm going to get those in here in one minute. This is a new project product for MiriamJoy.com. These take three AA batteries, so they are super bright. They're wire, so they're bendable. So I don't want these anything fancy. I'm just going to kind of get them into my pumpkin right now. There's 30 little lights on these. And you can also, and the last time I kind of wrapped them around the, the rim as well on my last one. And then that was kind of cute. So I had a little bit poking out. You can, I just set my batteries in here last time. Um, that's up to you. I'm not going to do that this time. So they'll come all the way to the top. But they're super fun and super bright. So that's a great little thing just to kind of use the um, lights for. And then you've kind of already got that candle glow in the dark feel. Wouldn't that be awesome for Halloween out on a porch or something? The last thing I did was I put a spider on top. You could put it anywhere you wanted. A bigger spider. Um, that's totally, again, up to you how you want to decorate it. The spider in the back was a clip-on spider, so there was a lot you could do with him. Now, don't get stuck just thinking lights. If you were having a Halloween party and you want to put your silverware in them or different items like that, you can just, I would suggest, leaving a little wire piece off. That's, you know, what I would do, and that way they wouldn't get in the way. But there's so much potential with that, and you've created it for just a tiny bit of money, and it really helps add that fun, festive Halloween feel. On this one, I wanted to go back and explain. I added glitter to this while the Maj Paj was still wet and you could even go like just over the pumpkin or behind the pumpkin with a second coat and so that the glitter would be like in the background or the foreground so think of that as well to give you some uh, different options wasn't that so much fun? There's so much you can do with this project. Just take it and build on it. If you want to purchase any of the little fairy lights to add to it, which really gives it that Halloween feel, come on over to MiriamJoy.com. Thank you so much for supporting us. Have a fun and safe Halloween.